let's talk about scale. When we say we're going to scale something, we're talking about taking its size and stretching it or squashing it. In Game Maker Studio 2.3, we can scale the different components in a sequence. In this example, we'll create a sequence that shows a mushroom making its way to our character, and when they collide, the mushroom will disappear and cause our character to grow or scale much larger. After a moment, the character will scale to the regular size so that the animation can repeat seamlessly. Okay, so this one's going to be a lot of fun. We've only got three sprites, a character with his origin at the center, a ground with its origin at the center, and a mushroom sprite with its origin at the center. I've already created a sequence, completely blank, and there's nothing in it. And I want to go over a couple ways to add the sprites into the track panel. So the first way, which we've done before, is just by clicking and dragging like that from the resource tree right into the track panel, and it appears right at the center. The ground, we are going to move down, and it's going to snap at the bottom. And if we want to scale it in the ID, it's really easy. We just have to look at the resize little nodes here at the end and click and drag it to the size that we want. And now that sprite is that wide. The second way to add a sprite into the track panel is by clicking this little plus here. And then we're going to find uh, our folder where the resource is located, scale. And we're going to add a character. And that adds it right at the origin of the sequence, right at zero, zero. The third way is just to click on our last asset and drag it right onto the canvas and it will appear right where we want it to. So we're going to align that with the floor and for the mushroom we're going to make it just off stage just a little bit. Um, so now we have our three assets added as tracks onto our sequence. Um, because we know we want for sure the ground and the character to appear for all 60 frames, which is one second of our sequence, we're going to hold down control and click here. And that's going to allow us to select both tracks here on the dope sheet. We're going to click and drag that out. So now the character and the ground appear for all 60 seconds of the sequence. The mushroom's a little bit different because when we want the mushroom to eventually reach the player, we're going to have it disappear. And we're going to have that take 30 frames or half a second to get to the middle. Um, so let's add a keyframe to have the motion of the mushroom heading over to the player. I'm going, uh, we're going to start on frame zero. We're going to add a position. And it looks like that's already done for us. So we're going to push a little arrow out to see all the parameters that have already been keyframed. So at frame zero, um, our position of our mushroom is going to be right over here. At frame 30, we want... Let's move that out so it's still, it's still visible on frame 30. Then on frame 31, it'll disappear. So on frame 30... We want it to be aligned right with our character, or maybe just a little bit before to give the impression that it's kind of moving into it. Um, so if we scrub our playhead through, you can see that the mushroom is moving into our player and then disappears on frame 31. So let's make sure our animation is looping. Let's preview that to see what that looks like so far. So we have a mushroom that's going into our player and then disappearing. Perfect. So right as the mushroom hits the player, we're going to have the, the player grow in size because that's what happens in video games when you get a mushroom, right? So let's start at f this frame here, at frame 30. Let's add a position keyframe here. Oh, I'm sorry, not a position keyframe. We don't need that. So delete a parameter. We just hit the delete key over the parameter. We're going to add a skill keyframe. We're not moving the player. We're just scaling it. And let's add a scale right here. Let's say it's going to take three uh, three frames, and the scale is going to be 150% wider and 150% taller. Now, you'll notice something happened here. So as the player grows, it grows into the ground, right? And that's because we need our origin to... Uh, our origin point to be set at its feet so that the character grows upwards away from the ground rather than growing outwards from the origin right at its chest. So the head will grow a little bit and the feet will grow and that's what's causing it to go into the ground. So let's reset that for just a minute. Let's go and set our character. Let's remove this so it's not going to create a keyframe here. 
In our gizmo tool, let's select the character, make sure the origin uh, gizmo tool is selected. And let's move that origin point right at our character's feet. So let's preview our animation to see what's going on. As the mushroom reaches over to the player and the player grows, you'll see that the player grows from the point of the origin. So it looks like they're actually getting taller and moving away from the ground as if they're standing on it, which is perfect. We're going to go a few more frames and wait. We're going to set another scale keyframe right here. We're going to go through three more frames, and we're going to return this back to 100% uh, of its original width and height. Now, how we're going to do that is, rather than uh, selecting the X scale and then typing in 100, then the Y scale and typing in 100, I can select this little link of values here. And what this is going to do is when I change one value, it's going to change the other one. So I'm going to click 100, push Enter, and then I'm going to keyframe it. Boop. So now that the scale of the character starting on frame 44 will have 150% of the scale across three frames will shrink back down do 100 and then this animation will repeat and that's all there is to it so let's take a look at our animation here mushroom goes over player gets larger for just a moment and gets smaller and the animation will repeat with the mushroom coming over and our player getting bigger so we've adjusted the scale in a few ways once in the IDE, when we first laid down the ground, uh, keep in mind it was just a perfect square when we first laid down the sprite, and then we stretched it to fit the width of our entire sequence. And then we keyframe scale with our character starting on frame 30. Across three frames, we moved the scale from 100% to 150%. We waited a little bit at 150% just to give players a time to see that they did indeed grow smaller on frame 44 we start a three frame shrink down back to 100%. And that's our animation.